All right, folks, so by now, if you follow along with any of my social media stuff, you might have heard that I'm gonna be on the new season of Alone, season eight, which premieres June 3rd at 9.30 Eastern on the History Channel. Now in this video, we're gonna go over my bow hunting setup that I took on Alone. But before we do that, I wanna just give you a little bit of background about the show itself if you're not familiar with it. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you should be because it is, in my opinion, the absolute best survival reality show out there. Um, and primarily because it is absolutely legit. It's real, it's not contrived like a lot of the other shows. Um, the basic premise of the show is there's 10 people, you get to pick 10 very basic uh, pieces of survival gear, things like sleeping bag, a pot, ferro rod, bow and arrow, things like that. And they take these 10 people and drop you off individually in some remote wilderness area and uh, with, a, with a case full of camera gear. And you self-document your entire journey as you try to scrape a living from that land and make that place your home. Um, it is a competition, and so the last person out there, the last person to leave, uh, gets a big fat cash prize. Here goes my last contact. It's on. Everybody is here because they have the physical skills. I don't think there's anything more real than what we're about to do. You're not at the top of the food chain here. Cougar, wolves, but then the big one is grizzlies. If you come up on a grizzly, you're in a world of hurt. I feel really weak. Just trying to get to morning. I'm out of here starving! At what point do I push the button? I don't want to tap, but I don't want to die! One in 10 chance for half a million dollars. What's your breaking point? So some of the other seasons have been in places like the Arctic. Uh, they had one in Argentina, um, Vancouver Island. This season, season eight, is going to take place at Chilco Lake in British Columbia. And if you've seen any of the promos for the show on the History Channel, uh, you'll know that they're really playing up the grizzly aspect. And I can tell you firsthand that that is no joke, that that, that is absolutely real. That place was literally crawling with grizzly. I, I think everybody was dealing with bears. Um, but anyway, I don't want to give anything away. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch and see what they did with all of the footage. I, I mean, th they have hundreds of hours of footage from everybody that was out there. And so it's going to be fun to watch and see what kind of story they come up with with all of the footage. All right, so let's talk about bow hunting. So I know there's going to be a lot of questions about the bow and arrow setup that I took on the show. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and just make a video about that uh, this time. In future videos, I'm going to be talking about some of the other gear that I took, my other ten, uh, nine items in, in addition to this, uh, as well as, you know, just the, the clothing and, and just basic gear that I took with me, boots, everything. Um, so to get started, uh, I have been building and hunting with self bows for over 20 years. Um, I've taken probably close to 30 big game animals with these bows, everything from whitetails, mule deer, elk, black bear, uh, wild boar, um, and then all kinds of small game. Oh, dang, I want a shot. That was fucking awesome. So these self bows are a little bit different than the more modern uh, bows made out of fiberglass or other modern materials. Um, and there's been a few self bows on alone throughout the seasons, but not very many. Most of the bows that you're going to see on that show are, are laminate fiberglass bows. Um, these bows, if they're well built, are absolutely efficient. They're deadly weapons, uh, but they can be a little bit more difficult to shoot. They're a little bit less forgiving. But if you learn to shoot them, uh, they, are, they can be very accurate. I did a video 
a couple of years ago up here in Idaho where I was shooting a, a 3D target uh, at 100 yards with this thing. Not that I would ever shoot an animal that far, it just goes to show you that they can be uh, very accurate weapons. So this is the bow that I took on the show. Um, it is an Osage Orange self bow. It's got a little bit of back set in the handle and then also a little bit of reflex in the tips. Uh, the bow is 64 inches overall and it draws right around 60 pounds or so at 29 inches. And that's a little bit heavier than what I normally shoot. Uh, normally I'll shoot anywhere from 50 to 55 pounds or so. Um, and I hunt elk and everything else with that weight. Um, the reason that I made this a little bit heavy is because when I made this, I had no idea where we were going. And so I wanted to be prepared for whatever I might encounter out there, whether that be moose, muskox, giraffe, like literally, I had no idea where we were going. I just knew um, that it was going to be somewhere cold. So this is just kind of a basic self bow. There's nothing real special about it. Um, it does have a little bit of character in it, a little bit of snake in the grain, uh, but there's no sinew backing or snake skin or anything like that. I wanted something that was very basic, something that was very functional, basic, that was just gonna get the job done that I didn't have to worry about. Um, I, I really like a sinew backed bow, but I didn't know where we were going and so I didn't know if, if the humidity was gonna be high, uh, I didn't know if we were gonna be in a dry environment, and with sinew, the, the environmental conditions that you're in can impact the performance of the bow. And so I didn't want to have to worry about any of that stuff. So I opted to go with just a straight up Osage self bow, which is about as practical as you can get in a primitive style bow. Um, the, uh, the quiver that I took, this is uh, a bow quiver from Creek Walker Trading. Uh, Donnie Wilkerson makes these things. I've been shooting uh, my bows with these on there for years. I like a bow quiver as opposed to a back quiver or a side quiver for a couple of different reasons. Um, one is that there, you always have your arrows. If you have your bow, you've got your arrows. It's just one solid unit. And we've seen on some other seasons where you know guys will have their bows and maybe one arrow. And in a bow hunting situation, that's, you want to try to avoid that if you can. And so having a bow quiver just ensures that you always have your arrows. Um, they don't get snagged up in the brush like, like a back quiver can or a side quiver. And then the other big reason that I like a bow quiver is because it keeps your broadheads separate. Um, years ago when I used to hunt with a back quiver, you know, I would just drop all the arrows in there and throughout a day of hunting, those arrows are in there just kind of rustling together and banging together. And it doesn't take a lot of that to take the edge off those broadheads. And especially when you're talking about traditional gear, having razor sharp broadheads is very important. Unfortunately, it's something that oftentimes is not really well understood and neglected. And so having a bow quiver, that keeps your broadheads secure, uh, not touching is, in my opinion, pretty important uh, to maintain that edge. So these arrows are not the arrows that I'm gonna have on the show, but uh, the only real difference is they have a crown dip and they have a different color fletching. Other than that, the arrows are identical. Uh, these are tail tapered, uh, dug fur shafts, and on the front of them, they've got uh, 190 grain meat heads. I really like these, uh, these tough heads because they are relatively narrow. They've got that three to one length to, uh, to width ratio and you can get them razor sharp. Uh, I like these relatively narrow heads because it gives you a better chance of a complete pass through with these, uh, these traditional bows. So you might ask yourself why take a self bow versus something that might be a little bit easier to shoot, you know, a modern recurve or a modern longbow. And for me, you know, I think that's just a personal preference type of thing. Uh, the self bows, I've been shooting these things, like I said, for over 20 years. And so personally, I'm very confident uh, in my ability with this bow. I'm, I'm confident in the bow itself. Um, and I just wanted to stick with what I was used to. They can be a little bit more challenging to shoot, but challenge is one of the big reasons that I decided that I wanted to take on this whole thing in the first place. So I built this bow myself. I went out into the woods, I cut the tree, split the staves, uh, dried those staves, and then you know, went through the whole bow building process, following a ring, 
uh, roughing out the bow, tillering, uh, doing the reflex, all of those things. And then I practice with this bow every single day. And I do that every year before hunting season. Uh, I shoot my bows year round, but usually uh, starting around June-ish, I'll start shooting every single day and I'll just ramp that up. Um, you know, as hunting season gets closer, I'll just shoot a little bit more and a little bit more. And by the time the September elk season comes around, I'm shooting, you know, several dozen arrows and in a session and I'll shoot two or three sessions a day. All right, so next week, uh, June 3rd, just before the premiere, I'm gonna go ahead and release another video where I'm talking about why. Why would anybody want to subject themselves to this, uh, being placed out in the wilderness with very, very minimal tools um, when you know it's gonna be a suck fest? Uh, and so be sure to check that out. Um, it, uh, the season premieres 9.30 Eastern. I think I'll probably uh, release that video around uh, 7.30 Eastern or something like that. Uh, so be sure to check that out. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. In future videos, I'm going to be going through the rest of my items that I took out there as well as uh, the rest of the gear that I took out there. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that and hit that bell icon so you can stay updated. And if you want to check out some of the videos where I'm hunting with these bows, go ahead and check out this playlist over here. There's, I don't know, dozens of hunting videos on there where I'm hunting everything from wild hogs to elk mule deer and everything in between um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this season rolls out we'll see you next time